South Africa is endowed with rich natural resources, but lacks the means and or tools for effective transformation of its biological capital into goods and services for social and economic development. This shortcoming contributes to the current levels of poverty in South Africa. Dr. Mosco Maromo. This is a song of beautiful wildlife. This is a song of creation. This is a song of glory and splendor. This is a song of life. I'm thinking about beauty surround us. I'm thinking about how lucky we are. I'm thinking about just where it leaves us. I'm thinking about the word trust. And how shall we live without you? Challenges given to us Then I remember It's all in the heart And beauty will never depart Then I remember It's all in the heart And beauty will never depart as South Africans, we are truly blessed to live in such an environmentally and culturally diverse country as South Africa. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard York, a game rancher from the Limpopo province of South Africa. I'm privileged to ranch in the Waterberg, the heartbeat of South Africa's wildlife industry. There's been a lot of media speculation, or dare I say, media misrepresentation about the wildlife industry. The majority of this was in actual fact pure media sensationalism, which bared little or no fact, and even less scientific research. As a game rancher, I'm proud to say that I breed with Golden Wildebeest, a color morph of the Blue Wildebeest. Today I'd like you to step into my world as we delve into what is really taking place across South Africa's landscape and how color variants are not only an integral part of biodiversity conservation, but are also playing a massive role in the socio-economic upliftment of rural people. The existence of colour variants on game farms has been condemned and criticised by many so-called conservationists who have made the following statements when referring to these animals. Man-made freaks, abnormal or deformed, inferior recessive mutants, aberrants, genetic manipulation, smarty box animals, genetically engineered, unnatural. Most of these terms and most of the slander has actually tarnished brand South Africa. Color variants are not unnatural or man-made and have existed amongst our natural wildlife populations since the beginning of time. Why then is the breeding of color variants considered to be such a heinous crime when certain top-tier organizations such as the IUCN and Endangered Wildlife Trust supported the breeding of the king cheetah, a color variant of the cheetah? Cape Nature also not only supported, but funded the research into the rejuvenation of the extinct quacha from color variants of the virtual zebra. Even in Pumalanga Parks and Development Bank of South Africa funded and supported the research of the black leopard in Pumalanga. Why then are private landowners condemned for conserving color variants and portrayed as being a threat to biodiversity conservation? The question we now have to ask is, what is biodiversity conservation? And what does it really mean when we say we must apply biodiversity conservation to our wildlife? According to the IUCN, biodiversity and conservation are defined as the following. Biodiversity, the variability amongst living organisms from all sources, including inter alia, terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems, and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes diversity within a species, between species and ecosystems. Conservation is defined as the protection, care, management and maintenance of ecosystems, habitats, wildlife species and populations within or outside their natural environments in order to safeguard their natural conditions for their long-term permanence. Color variants are a natural part of the ongoing evolutionary process. They occur in almost all forms of life and represent an increase, not a decrease, in biological diversity. No two animals are the same. The greater the genetic diversity of a species, the greater the chance of the survival of that species. 
What gives conservationists the right to determine which animals are normal and to be protected, and which animals are freaks because of their skin color and are to be destroyed? The first golden wildebeest my father ever saw was in 1986 on the farm Swinburne, situated in South Africa along the Limpopo River. This wildebeest was shot by a hunter. When my father asked the hunter, why did you shoot this animal? His response was simple, because it's unique, different, and I wanted it. Unbeknown to my father, local farmers had seen these wildebeest and had referred to them as force wildebeest in the early days, dating back to the 1920s, 30s. Most of the comments surrounding color variants have only focused on the negative, seldom focusing on the positive. The positive color variants have had huge conservation as well as socio-economic benefits to South Africa and its rural economy. Huge conservation benefits to founder populations. Previously, blue wildebeest were of little commercial value to farmers. They were seen as a threat to cattle farming industry and were persecuted, shot or destroyed as unwanted vermin, mainly because they are carriers of cattle malignant fever, a disease that is fatal to cattle. Currently, there are more wildebeest in South Africa than ever before. Change in land use results in the drastic reduction of the use in harmful and dangerous agricultural chemicals. Because game ranchers farm with highly adapted animals on indigenous pastures, there is little or no need for the use of pesticides or herbicides. There has been a huge reduction in soil erosion and leaching. As game ranchers, we have stopped unsustainable soil management practices and have converted bare exposed areas back into indigenous pastures due to high value color variants. Increased soil fertility, humus content, water holding capacity and biodiversity. The strategic use of fences for well-managed grazing systems are designed to mimic natural migration patterns of large herbivores. This involves short periods of intense utilization and longer rest periods, resulting in highly productive pastures with efficient mineral and water cycles. It is impossible to achieve this under extensive systems. A massive increase of biodiversity and combating climate change. Biodiversity has been destroyed by unsustainable land management practices and urbanization with its associated pollution and wasteful abuse of natural resources. Game ranchers and high value animals are aiding in the reversing of this process. The other key factor is socio-economic benefits. One of the most important factors of that is job creation and poverty reduction. But let me not speak about this. Let's rather ask someone who's on the ground and whose life has been changed by color variants. Yimu Moses Mahamba. Yimu ifo meni ala iplazi ni yimu nige sabantu musebens. Itali luksebens alumsebens in go 2006. Itali luksebens alumsebens in si si nengo mosui le nengo mizalus ne company nengo. Satule kanga nengo mos sabane ne ne company. And then Abantu Abantu the the second biggest contributing factor is value-added businesses. Due to the game ranching industry, we now have businesses for wildlife vets. We have auctioneering companies. We have game translocation companies. We have game capture teams. We have insurance companies. We have abattoirs and meat processing plants. We have fencing companies. And we have feed manufacturing companies. All of these industries have blossomed in the last few years as a result of high-value wildlife 
such as Calabrians. The third most important point is food security. Semi-extensive game farms have resulted in up to a 1,500% increase in production of game meat per hectare of land when compared to extensive hunting systems. This has a huge positive contribution to food security both in quantity and quality of healthy, hormone and antibiotic free meat through optimal ranch wildlife production. Increase in rural investment. Because of high valued wildlife, both local and international investors see this as a valuable strategic investment opportunity. Numerous industries are now moving back to rural areas and contributing to their socio-economic upliftment. Added benefits to tourism and hunting industries. High value game breeding subsidizes the local South African biltong hunter. No self-sustaining game farm can be financially viable through local biltong hunting on its own. I'll repeat that point because it's very important. No self-sustaining game farm can be financially viable through local biltong hunting on its own. The breeding of Calabrians has resulted in far more animals being available for the consumptive market at affordable prices. Calabrians provide an added attraction for both tourism and the trophy hunting industry. Classic examples include the white lines of Timbavati, the strawberry leopard of Mandiqui, and numerous bird species. The most well-known and esteemed ethical hunters have Calabrians proudly displayed in their trophy rooms. Funding conservation projects. Revenues generated through the production of high-valued game have been put back into the conservation and protection of iconic species such as our rhino. Funding research and development. Revenues generated have been used to fund research into animal genetics and vaccine development research. Support education and training. Numerous bursaries, grants and research funding have been implemented by Wildlife Ranch in South Africa. Advancing transformation and land reform. Possibly the most important point facing South Africa at the moment. Wildlife Ranch in South Africa has been seen as the leader in this field and is guiding a process where we endeavour to achieve a better life for all South Africans. Finally, I'd like to address some of the perceived risks or the inconsistencies within these perceived risks. Unnatural colour variants. WRSA's code of conduct does not support the creation of unnatural colour variants through hybridisation. WRSA supports the conservation of colour variants that are a natural part of biodiversity and have not been created by man. Exaggerated horn length. WRSA is unaware of living animals which have a horn length that exceeds the measurements of the number one Safari Club International or Roland Ward record book archives. Domesticated and habituated animals have little or no fear of humans, as is in the case with all our animals in parks and game reserves, in order to optimize tourism. The ill-informed should not confuse optimal wildlife production systems with domestication. So-called domesticated animals can also adapt to extensive systems, such as the Buffalo and Madiqui game reserve, which originated from the zoos of Europe. In the words of the former Saga CEO, Mr. Chris Nias, we should not underestimate the conservation benefit of captive bred animals. High game prices. Hunters contribute to conservation through the monetary value they pay for hunting and killing an animal. Yet when animals receive a higher value on auction for breeding and therefore conserving the species, they complain. Is it the view of hunters that it is ethical to kill an animal for a low value, but unethical to conserve and breed animals with a higher value? Inbreeding and selective breeding. The smaller the founder or introduced population of animals, and the less diversity within that original population, the greater the chance of inbreeding in any extensive system. Selective breeding of unrelated animals is the only way to prevent inbreeding in any animal population that does not have huge numbers in order to allow for effective natural selection. Inbreeding can only be mitigated through a well-managed selective breeding program in any population that does not have huge numbers of animals. Fences. Game ranches are criticized for erecting fences to the same norms and standards of those erected by our national parks. Fences are an integral part of biodiversity conservation management. They are used in many ways, depending on the management objectives of those involved. Animal welfare. Animal welfare is a question of good management. We cannot regulate for good management. We can only educate. Mr. Barry York. 
It is said that public opinion is important in decision-making process. Let the voice of the rural people who depend on the land be heard.